friends, it's JJ, and this is Travel Tuesday with Today with JJ. As you can see by the title of the video, we are going to the most famous Honolulu. The island of Oahu has a great mix of activities, particularly in Honolulu. But no trip to Oahu would be complete without visiting some of the island's world-renowned beaches. The city of Honolulu falls roughly into three areas. That include Waikiki, Downtown, and Pearl Harbor. As I state in all of my videos, please check the entry requirement into the island of Hawaii. If you haven't seen my last two videos, my Big Island video or my Maui video, you will have to do specific steps in order to get into the islands of Hawaii or you will not be permitted in. But don't worry, don't worry. I did make sure to put a link down in the description below of the website that you need to go to and after you get those done, where to upload your test results. So here are the 10 amazing things to do in Honolulu, Hawaii. Number one on the list is Waikiki Beach. 19th century Hawaiian royalty used to come to the Honolulu neighborhood of Waikiki to relax and surf. That's because this area's famous beach is the go-to spot for its soft, honey-colored sand and the high waves that lap the shores during the winter months. But you don't have to be a surfer to appreciate Waikiki Beach. Just lie back on the beach towel, relax, and gaze up at the majestic Diamond Head State Monument in the distance. When you need a break from the beach itself, there are scores of shops and restaurants lining the adjacent Kalakaua Avenue. The street is home to some of the world's most exclusive designer boutiques, including Cartier, Coach, Hermes, and Louis Vuitton. Many of the best Oahu hotels also overlook Waikiki Beach. Number two on the list is Pearl Harbor. Visiting Honolulu will not be complete without a visit to Pearl Harbor, where the infamous Japanese attack in December of 1941 killed over 2,400 people and forced the U.S. to enter World War II. Pearl Harbor is a national historic landmark and also an active military base. Organized tours will take you to important sites such as the battleship, the USS Missouri, the site where the Japanese surrendered, the USS Arizona Memorial, the Pacific Aviation Museum Pearl Harbor, the USS Bofin, where you can get a glimpse of life on a World War II submarine and the Pacific Submarine Museum with its indoor and outdoor exhibits. Number three on the list is Diamond Head State Monument. The most recognizable of Hawaii's natural landmarks, Diamond Head, has a distinctive profile. Located on the eastern portion of Waikiki's coastline, this historic peak was once an important part of the island's coastline defense. Today, you can hike up the steep trail that raises 560 feet from the floor of the crater to the summit in just 0.8 of a mile. At the summit of Diamond Head Crater is an enormous lighthouse built in 1917, as well as bunkers and the fire control station that controlled artillery for Fort Ruger and Waikiki. The reward for the challenging uphill hike is the amazing panoramic view of the shoreline below. If you're planning on making the trek, you should be well prepared with water and a sturdy pair of footwear. Number four on the list is Coco Crater Railway Trail. 
If you're able to conquer the 1,050 steps of the Coco Crater Railway Trail, you'll be handsomely rewarded with breathtaking views of Honolulu's shoreline. The stairs are actually railroad ties that were once used by a military tram that carried supplies and personnel to the Outlook and bunkers during World War II. Because of this, many of the steps are very tall and steep, and the path's only level stretch is a bridge that spans a 40-foot drop. You should consider hiring a local guide who will give useful pointers to help prepare for the journey and provide a narrative about the site's history. If you're not up for the climb, the Coco Crater Botanical Garden is a great activity. It's accessible by a two mile path that loops through 60 acres of endangered and rare plants. A printed map and tour are provided at the gate and there is no charge to walk among the gardens, desert landscape that includes arid plants native to Hawaii, Africa, and Madagascar. Number five on the list is Iolani Palace. Iolani Palace is an impressive neoclassical building that was completed in 1882. Now restored to its former glory, it is the official residence of Hawaii's monarchy and is a great place to experience Hawaiian history. The palace was a residence of Hawaii's royalty until they were disposed by the American settlers in 1893 then served as the state capital until the modern one was constructed in 1969. The palace was restored in the 1970s and opened as a museum in 1978. The interior has elaborately carved wood paneling made of native woods. The throne room still has the original carved throne and chandelier and the facade is adorned with stained glass and elaborate decorations. Number six on the list is Lanakai Beach. Travel about 15 miles northeast of downtown Honolulu to the Windward Coast and you'll discover two of the island's most popular beaches. Of the two, Lanakai is the most tranquil offering relatively calm waters and a mile of white sands. Lanakai Beach is also within view of Mangkalua Islands, a haven for kayaking and surfing. Lanakai Beach is praised for its gorgeous setting and its location in a mostly residential part of Kailua makes it less crowded and more relaxing than Waikiki Beach. Number seven on the list is Bishop Museum and Planetarium. Bishop Museum, Hawaii's state museum, contains one of the best collections of Polynesian arts and artifacts in the state. The museum's permanent exhibit includes Kahili's, a collection of feathered royal standards that served as flags for past royalty as well as Hawaiian feathered capes and helmets. Other areas of the museum focus on the region's natural history, including traditional occupations like whaling. Also of note is a large collection of artifacts from the South Pacific and objects brought by the Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, Caribbean, Portuguese, German, and other early settlers. The museum is also home to the J. Maramu Planetarium, which presents a variety of shows that explore the Hawaiian night sky and other celestial topics, as well as films about dinosaurs and Polynesian culture. Number eight on the list is Manoa Falls. This approximately 100 foot tall waterfall, which sits five miles northeast of downtown Honolulu, is easily accessible. All you need is the proper footwear, insect repellent, drinking water, and stamina to hike about one and a half miles on a well-worn path. 
The rainforest scenery is out of this world with enormous prehistoric ferns and the snaking roots of banyan trees. It's no wonder why Steven Spielberg filmed scenes from Jurassic Park here. You probably won't see any dinosaurs, but be prepared. The path to the falls can be quite slippery with mud, so wear sturdy hiking shoes that you don't mind getting dirty. If you're new to hiking, it is recommended that this trail is for you. It'll get your blood pumping, but you'll be rewarded with breathtaking views of the fall. To enjoy the beauty of the falls without rubbing elbows with hordes of tourists, I recommend that you arrive before 10 a.m. Number nine on the list is Shangri-La. The American tobacco heiress Doris Duke spent her winters living in this opulent oceanfront home near Diamond Head State Monument. She began building it in 1937 and spent nearly 60 years filling its walls and rooms with art and furniture from Egypt, India, Morocco, Spain, Syria, and Turkey. By the end of her life, she had amassed approximately 2,500 objects, which are now available for you to see on a tour of her home. If you're an art lover, you should definitely make plans to stop by Shangri-La. And even if you're not a huge art lover, but are a bit curious about the eclectic heiress, the Shangri-La is very impressive and well worth the visit, and it can't be missed. And last but not least of the final 10 is Oahu Surfing. It's no secret Oahu is home to some of the world's best surfing spots. Every winter, when surfing conditions are at their best, Professional surfers from across the globe flock to Oahu's North Shore to shred some gnarly waves in the van's triple crown of surfing. Basically, the Super Bowl of surfing. The triple crown takes place in November and December when massive swells roll in from the stormy Northern Pacific Ocean. But you don't have to be a pro to hang 10 in Oahu. There are plenty of surfing schools that will take you from a grom, which is local slang for surfing newbie, to a big kahuna in the course of a day. Best of all, no one will laugh at you if you wipe out. And more than likely, you will. <laughs> Yay, you have made it to the end of the video. This wouldn't be a Hawaii video without luau's. Of course, Honolulu has some of the best luau's. So down below in the description, I have put the top three luau's that you can visit while you're visiting Honolulu, Hawaii. You know the deal. And if you're new here, please comment where you are watching from. So a few quick tips about visiting Honolulu. The first is the best time to visit. The best time to visit Oahu is from mid-April to early June or between September and mid-December. During these shoulder seasons, attractions are less crowded, festivals are plentiful, and airfare and room rates are at their lowest. Second tip, because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there are specific guidelines to enter the islands of Hawaii. Down below in the description, I have two links. The first link is how to go about getting testing in order to get into Hawaii. And once you do your testing, you do have to upload your testing within 72 hours prior to arriving to the island. Now make sure to check the first link just in case any of the information that I gave has changed. And lastly, thank you so much to everyone that has supported my channel. We are almost to 800 subscribers, only 200 away from 1,000 subscribers. And if you're new to the channel and you'd love to 
travel around the world with me, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Also click the like button and don't forget to put your bell notifications on to always so you're notified of every Travel Tuesday. And until next Tuesday, have an amazing time on your trip to Honolulu and I'll see you next week. Bye.